Well, the last Oakland A's team will not be a 100-loss team. You are Locked On A's, your daily Oakland A's podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, A's fans, and welcome to Locked On A's. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast. We talk about your Oakland A's all year long. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. I've been a baseball podcast for a while now, and this is my first season hosting Locked On A's. And my sixth is a member here of the Locked On Podcast Network. Follow us at Locked On A's on Twitter or whatever it's called now. Uh, same handle for Instagram. I'm your pal, Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. we got a lot of positive notices about my conversation, the heavily bleeped conversation with Brian from The Last Dive Bar, and we're going to continue that conversation today in segments two and three. Do you know why? We talked for a while. There was a lot of vaping going on. There was a lot of Red Bull being consumed, and I had to hit the bleep button a lot because I don't want to get explicit rating on the show. So we had a lot of fun, and we're going to continue the fun of him sitting in the parking lot before a phenomenal extra inning game uh, between the Tigers and Oakland last weekend. Hey, did someone say phenomenal extra inning game? Boy, did we have another one today. This was great. This was great, great, great. The A's went into Houston in front of 36,000 fans there at that weird, stupid ballpark. I wish they still played in the Astrodome. I digress. A uh, lot of solid offense. You know, Altuve got three hits. Geloff got two hits, including a massive home run. And the A's were up 2 nothing going into the seventh. And Sears was great. Sears pitched six innings, did not let up a run. Arigetti, who got off to a rough start and put the uh, Astros behind the, you know, 2 nothing hole, dusted himself off and pitched into the seventh himself. And then the, you know, the A's had a two nothing lead and then Singleton got that triple and with two outs, Altuve got the game tying hit. And when he tied the game, I really thought, ah, that was their chance. That was their, I, I did not think the A's were going to win. I, I'm, I got to be honest with you. I thought this was going to be a game, one of those games that we just kick ourselves where they had the lead and the bullpen just coughed it up. And the A's wiggled out of situations in the 9th, 10th, and the 11th, and the box score will not show in many ways who the real hero was. And it was someone who did not start the game. Daz Cameron, with two outs in extra innings, caught a sinking line drive that looked like it was going to be a, a walk-off hit. And um, it was, uh, who, who wound up getting the, uh, Jeremy Pena with two outs and a runner on third. Jeremy Pena hit a slicing line drive to right field. Daz Cameron came running in and made a fantastic sliding catch and wound up saving the game. That would have been a walk-off hit. And then in the top of the 12th, something happened. And it's something I have been saying for years. And the sabermetrics crowd disagrees with me. People who show me this, that, and the other thing in terms of this advanced metric or that advanced metric show it to me. And I say, I know I'm right. Now, that's not a very scientific thing to say. But I'm going to say something. Probably not something you're supposed to say on an A's podcast. But I'm going to say it anyway. I love bunts. I love bunts. And I'll tell you why. Okay, there's a, there was a couple of points they bunted to get a runner to, to, from second to third. But when you have someone who's fast and who can bunt, what you can do is potentially create chaos. The reason why I like bunting is it's weird. You get a ball that rolls in the right place. If you position it great, and people have to run and be slightly out of position and sometimes panic. And you saw that happen in the 12th inning. 
the bunting for a base hit because it was perfectly placed, the bunt to drive in the first run because the pitcher panicked. Anytime you can create chaos on the field is a good day for you and for me. I love infield hits. I love speed. I love stolen bases. And yes, I love bunts. And the A's put two runs on the board in the 12th with a sac- the uh, Daz Cameron. There he is again. Got a sacrifice uh, or bunted for a base hit. Schumann forced a throwing error. And then uh, they got the fi- then one more out as well, or one more run as well. And they wound up winning the game four to three against a Houston Astros team that could very well be the American League championship uh, team because there is no dominant team in the American League right now. But I digress. But there you go. Smart baseball, good solid defense, didn't allow the Astros to go on a huge run, and bunted, 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 causing a little bit of chaos on the field. Now, what's wrong with that? Now, Estes is going... On the 11th, Hunter Brown is going for Houston. That's going to be a tough game, but it's doable. It's a doable matchup. And you've got them on the first game. You already know you got one game down. So you just got to split. And so right now they got Estes going in game two, which is going to be this afternoon or this evening. And Spence versus Valdez. Okay, that's going to be really tough because Valdez is one of the best pitchers in the American League. But you know what? Who knows? Maybe he doesn't pitch well in the day game. I don't know, and neither do you. All I know is they have to win one of these two, and then that'll be fine. All right, um, but that was capping it. With that, they have avoided, they have successfully avoided. uh, They won their 63rd game, which means they will not lose 100. They lost 100 last year. They lost 100 the year before. No 100-loss team this year. So they checked that off the list. Plus, Anaheim lost again. The Angels lost. So there looks like the possibility of them, you know they're not going to lose 100. And they're winning games while the Angels are losing. So the chance of them finishing in last place are probably really, really small at this point. So think about that for a second. Going into this year saying, hey, the A's are not going to lose 100 games. It won't be in last place. It's looking that way. All right. When we get back from this break, more from Brian from the Last Dive Bar. Uh, people who love the move to Las Vegas, get ready. I'm going to be bleeping some stuff out. Hey, you like going to live events, not just baseball games, but any sporting event, any theater event, concert, comedy. Well, you should be using Game Time to get tickets for any live event. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live event even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. And it's got so many great features. You've got the Game Time Picks, which makes curating easier to save more on sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. All in pricing. You can get your tickets, no hidden fees. You get the seat view, great panoramic view of your seat before you buy. And the lowest price guarantee, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Game Time ticket coverage is covered by the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork of buying tickets from Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONMLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-M-L-B for 20 bucks off. Download game time today. What time is it? It's game time. Thanks so much for making Locked On A's your first listen today. Now check out the Locked On MLB podcast. I'm here to provide a national expertise and perspective and sometimes my point of view and my humor to get you ready for the Major League Baseball playoffs here in the dog days of summer. Prepare for the fall classic with me and I've got to cover it every single day at Locked On MLB, available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. All right, let's get back to the parking lot. Enjoy some Red Bull with Brian from Last Dive Bar. And you no. can't do the comparison to the Golden Knights because the Golden Knights were an oh, expansive dude. team. The they Golden Knights had a team. They were born and, there. Like, 
if you want to compare, compare the Raiders and look at that. Okay, cool. Yeah, they make more money. Yeah, it's football. It's the NFL, right? It's not 81 home games. It's not right. John Fisher. But it's look what look at what they did to the Raiders the, the franchise. Like, yeah, they're worth more money and all that because of all the stuff added stuff. But what do you see in the fans? You don't see a soul. You just see a bunch of tourists. You just see a, a few thousand Raider fans. It's a sea of the opposing fans team's colors. Like, like it's sad, especially when you see what they built here in Oakland and even arguably in L.A. Like, you don't have that culture there in Las Vegas. And uh, it, it's completely flipped that, that, that franchise around to where they're a laughing stock. Oh, they're worth, you know, X amount of billion dollars now. Cool. They're laughing stock. They're very rich laughing stock. You know what I mean? But baseball is not football. No. And, and football's connection to Vegas is the gambling. And that isn't the same thing here. Okay. I got it. Before I let you go here, we need to talk puppets. Uh, I, I was watching, I actually, to be honest, I was, I mainly listened because I listen, you know, I listen to games more, especially after, especially after COVID, I've enjoyed listening to games a lot more. And so yeah. a lot of times I'm, I'm listening to the game and doing things. So I didn't see the puppets. And then, I'm watching the final. It was the, that was the game that Seth Brown got the walk off hit, and I'm watching the game. And I'm staring. I'm going like, "There's a little Statler and Waldorf thing going on behind home yeah. plate." I'm like, "Am I high, or is, are there puppets behind home plate?" You, you might have been high, but you well, were still yeah. seeing puppets. <laughs> and my dear friend uh, Wes Hoffman, who's a diehard A's fan, yeah, the comedian you know, Wes Hoffman. Oh yeah, we've done many oh, yeah. shows. I know yeah. Wes has been on this show. What's and, up, Wes? Yeah, and, and uh, oh, he's watching. And Wes sent me the clip of from the Mariners broadcast where they were yeah. basically the Mariners were treating like they were a Jim Henson production and yeah. uh, just keeping the camera on the puppets. <laughs> I fell off my couch, I was laughing so yeah. hard. But uh, fill people in what we need to know about what was happening with the puppet show there. Yeah, so my best friend Rob Roberts, right? He, mm -hmm. he and his wife run a company on the side of their businesses. And it's called 33 Customs. They make the most glorious bobbleheads and just crazy outlandish things, right? And so we tasked them to make uh, some puppets because we wanted to do some music video. So we we had Todd uh, Saran. Um, he's the one that basically made a few of the music videos. But we wanted we debuted them at the uh, FJF, you know, the John Fisher Fest, which was mm -hmm. just, you know, a way for fans when they weren't really coming to the games yet. It gave them an excuse to kind of like pop the cherry to come back into the stadium this year to take in, right, A's baseball for themselves, yep. right? And so basically that's what that whole little, you know, mini – to even say reverse boycott, you, you shouldn't say that because there will never be another reverse boycott. No, but never. it was just – it was that's why it was the FJF Fisher Fest, right? And so mm -hmm. uh, we debuted the puppets then and had some fun with them. And the next thing you know, uh, Todd uh, Todd and Gay brought them – uh, one time down to the uh, to the to the, the diamond level, but then like, but this time I was coming with them, right? So I'm running the socials as we're doing it, and then I got my man Q Q Cortez, right? He's the one that chops up those videos for me, gets them to me in real time, so we were able to put it out as it was happening, and then I was just live tweeting, live posting on Instagram, like here's the update, here's what they're saying, and so uh, so yeah, we knew they were gonna come and get the puppets, right? And the call came uh, first from MLB. So it was all MLB. So right. the game, the feed got picked up on the MLB feed. And MLB was the one that would tell the A's broadcast. And then the A's broadcast told security to come or whatever. But the security guard's Ramon. He's hella cool. He's like locally, he's like lightweight famous when it comes to security guards, right? So right, whatever, right. Ramon. And so he came over. He's like, guys, you, you, the first thing he said was like, you can't have the puppets moving while the pitcher is coming set. Mm -hmm. They they complain, and I said, "Well, that's kind of weird because we're sitting front row. Pitcher hasn't spoke to the umpire once, right? So we knew that was bull, right? Also, you don't you ever see that clip of the '86 World Series? The woman was behind uh, Rich Gedman of the Red Sox and doing this the whole game to try oh, yeah. to distract yeah. the Red Sox. People waving stuff and all that. I mean, that's that's all. Come well, on, it, you're sitting diamond level. People are moving around all game, so right. we knew that that excuse was." So, so I said, you'll see me talking to him. So I, I was like, okay, so if we keep them completely still, just like this, <laughs> are we good? And he goes, because mm, I'm like, you said it's because we're moving them. 
So if we keep him still, it's just like a regular person sitting here in the seat. And he goes, okay, yeah, that's cool. All right. So then, boom, the Mariners broadcast, Aaron Goldsmith, like, he continued to talk about it. He, and was, it was, so like, funny. he was so funny. He was <laughs> yeah, so dude. funny. So then, uh, so then they came back down, uh, Ramon, and he's like, all right. Uh, now they're saying no puppets. So we're like, okay, cool. So then now – uh, Todd had his five, and I then I had a shirt, our shirt with the puppets on it. So I'm like, so here I am. With, okay, you take the puppets away, but I got the shirt on, and then Todd's got the fire truck shirt that just basically says FK John Fisher, right? Yeah. And so that lasted for like an inning or two, and then like, okay, you can't have that because it says it looks like it says you know John Fisher. So we're like, well, what do you mean? It doesn't say that. It says fire truck John Fisher. Like he likes fire trucks. And then so we were laughing, and then I was joking, and you'll see me pointing up like this because I was like, well, okay, how about we take this cell flag I have in my pocket and put it up on the on the fence? Like, we're, like, trying to wheel and deal what we can do just – and he's laughing, we're laughing. And then so then Paul – or uh, Todd puts on his jersey, and it's one of those pro-line mock-ups, cell yeah. jerseys. Yeah. And he's got the big middle finger. So he's he goes, man, you can't wear that. And we're like, hey, wait till you get the call. And he's like, all right, I'll wait till I get the call. He never got the call, so we – so he was wearing that the, the rest of the night, and then and then the game ends, and then we end up shooting the with all the security guards. I invited them out to Line 51 for the wake that we're having after the final game. We're, we're, I'll be there. there. I will be there. I will Hell be yeah. there. I'll yeah, be so, there. Then, so then as, so we were talking then for a while. So by the time we left, we're walking out, and if you ever sat diamond level, you're with all the players. You're, you're by all the broadcasts. You're, it's pretty cool, right? And yeah. so – Literally, Aaron Goldsmith was walking out, and we just were like this. And he, he goes, hey, puppet guys. And I'm like, hey, you're Aaron Goldsmith. And he's like, yeah. And then so we just started chopping it up and just talking, and, and it was just hilarious, you know. And so, uh, uh, so yeah, that's how it happened, you know, and that's how it ended. And so uh, they're right now being shipped today. They're being shipped back to Rob uh, because he's going to be doing an entire uh, grave site um, uh, for the line 51, uh, wake right. event. So we're going to have a whole setup on the stage where you can go say your final, final goodbyes to the fandom or, or say whatever you want, but it's going right. to look pretty cool. It's going to be a big ass tombstone grass. Uh, you'll be able to play some roses on there, uh, get your tombstone giveaway pin. And so, yeah, it's going to be pretty, pretty, uh, you know, it'll be emotional, but it's, it, it's a wake, right. You know, right. it's, it's what you do right. after a funeral. Brian, you know what I thought you were about to see? What the sentence I thought you were about to say was that he was going to ship them off. And he said they got to ship them off. And I really thought you were going to say to Cooperstown that they were going to be oh. Coop, like they'd be there with Honus Wagner's glove, <laughs> Lou Gehrig's uniforms, the two puppets from behind there. And I, I, because if you go, I was in the Hall of Fame earlier this year, and they have yeah. stuff from like the like from the Brooklyn Symphony Band. Or some of the from some yeah. like the the Freddie says at Yankee Stadium and the pinwheels at uh, at Comiskey Park and they have the yeah. uh, some of the dump the DH so I'm like I could see that. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over five billion active members, and Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on price picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. And now you can win up to 100 times your money on price picks with as little as four correct picks. Price picks is the best way to get on the action. And it's available in almost every state, including here in California, also in Texas and Georgia. Price picks invented the flex play, which means you can still cash out and your lineup isn't perfect. You could double your money, even if one of your picks does not hit. So download the Prize Picks app today. Use code LockedOnMLB and get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. That's code LockedOnMLB on Prize Picks to get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. You don't even need to win to get the five dollar bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks run your game. All right, this is a reminder that Locked On MLB is the other show you should be listening to. I'm the host of that, too, and I'm getting you prepared for the Fall Classic. I've got it covered every single day. You can find the link to Locked On MLB in the description, so you don't need to search. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. 
All right, Brian, before I let you go, I have to show you this because this literally came in while you and I were here. Because on a previous show, there was someone who was getting on me a little bit about my skepticism of Vegas as a site for the A's. And it's one of the listeners, and I'll show you the, this is the, the comment that he wrote. He said, Ken Clue wrote, Skeptic said there's no fan base for NHL hockey in Vegas. The Golden Knights led the league in attendance last year. And that led to me saying, okay, yes, but they they started their career, they started their life as a Stanley Cup final and blah, blah, blah. They were the first yeah. team in, all the other thing. You and I are talking, and I got this from a listener, Kevin Sander. One of your listeners said that Las Vegas led the NHL in attendance. They were 13th. <laughs> you can confirm this. <laughs> Like, what are we doing here, folks? Like, if you're gonna come and talk, shit, know your, shit, right? You, you know your, shit. you just sound like a, uh, you sound like an idiot, right? Like, know your, shit. this is supposed to be your golden knight, your golden goose. This is your franchise. Know everything about them. They've only been around a few years. You should know everything about them. If you want to say they if you want to say they've had success, <laughs> they demonstrably have. But don't say yeah. they led the league in attendance if they haven't. But also, it's just stupid to compare the Golden Knights to to NFL, to baseball, to basketball. Right. You got to speak about the sport in which you're talking about, and this is baseball. You know, you can compare them all you want to the Raiders and to the, you know what I mean? That you're comparing apples to to uh, uh, trains, like not even apples to oranges. You're comparing a fruit to a guy moving the train. Like it doesn't make any sense, and it blows my mind. People try to make the, the, those reaches and compare Vegas to. To, to, with the Raiders, Knights, and the A's, it's like you can't compare that, dude. And then again, the common f-ing factor that these guys aren't discussing is John Fisher. And, and but, like, open your f-ing eyes. And if you do, you're going to see the worst owner of all the professional sports has completely just killed everything from fans to to employees to players to history to nostalgia. This guy is f-ing on all of it. And you know, I would be saying, hey, we don't want this, dude. Like, let's wait. Get an expansion team and get our second, like, uh, you know, Golden Knight esque type moment, you know, with, with baseball. Like, you know, it's just, it's crazy. And, and I would be clamoring for basketball more than, um, you know, more than I would, uh, what's it called? Um, baseball. I'd want basketball there. It's more of an entertainment sport. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, something, something just clicked with your bike there, but there you go. Oh, hang uh, on. No, you know, no, I can hear you fine. I can hear you fine. Just it's, it's oh, suddenly okay. changed here. But oh, my uh, car shut off. Oh, there, there you go. Yeah, you well, might, that's you how might long get... we've been here. You cut, shut your car off. Well, first yeah. of all, I just got to say, I'm probably just going to split this into two episodes. Lord knows I got to get the bleep button going. But, um, but folks, just remember this if you exaggerate your facts, it undercuts your argument. And I'm saying this as the host of the most popular podcast in the world. We just passed Joe Rogan in terms of downloads and everything like that. So do not exaggerate your numbers. It sort of makes you think, it makes you look like you're not saying the right thing. Brian of Last Dive Bar, can you tell people where they can find you, buy your merchandise, and and have fun support? That's the main thing. I want us to have, it's, it's sad, but let's make this a celebration of everything great with the green and gold in the final couple of weeks, the final 20 some odd days of the Oakland A's existence. Yeah, man, you can you can find us on all major socials. We're on uh, Twitter, we're on IG, Facebook, and uh, Threads at Last Dive Bar. And then you go to lastdivebar.com. Uh, if you know, we got a lot of affiliate codes. If you watch, you know, Gamer Athletics or Ricky Blog, a hey, locked mm-hmm. on A's. Oh, Ricky Blog. Us- Follow everyone. Follow Ricky Blog. If you, yeah. Anytime you can get a Ricky Blog, it's it's, it's phenomenal. But I mean, locked on A's. Like you got to go to the website, sign up for the affiliate program because. Yeah. What it does is it basically offers the customer 10% off. Then mm-hmm. we take that 10% and then give that affiliate the 10%. So they can, it helps them out with like for Gabe, it helps them out with like gas money, buying new batteries, uh, same thing with Ricky blog, you know? And so we're all about like giving it back and, you know, dis- dispersing like the, 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 the stuff that we do amongst like the fans and our, our friends and, and just trying to grow like what it is that we, that we do. But, um, but yeah, you know, just know that when you spend at Last Dive Bar, you are contributing to uh, charities. You're contributing to community events. You're con- you're contributing to that that the wake. You're contributing to the sponsorship of the ports and 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 next year with the Oakland Ballers, like you're contributing to bobblehead giveaways, pin giveaways, you know. And so we're just trying to do cool shit 
fans because we're fans as well. And like, if my favorite team told me, "Hey, we got an extra bobblehead giveaway," because these fans are paying for it and designing it and manufacturing it, like, you know, that's 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 where do I sign up? Where do I buy a T-shirt? Well, the, now and go follow them on Last Dive Bar for everyone else here. Follow us at Locked On A's on Twitter or whatever it's called now, and on Instagram. I am your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter. Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Yeah, I'm splitting this up into two. Putting on the bleep phone <laughs> because we're trying not to get the uh, explosive oh, rating on this. Dude, I'm sorry. I, I, oh, I no, no, no. The uh, last thing I want to do is censor you. <laughs> I, I, I would much rather put in the bleeps and say, have fun. I'm not, I told you. I'm not going to hold you back. But, yeah. hey, on behalf of Brian of The Last Dive Bar, this has been a multi-part <laughs> series here hey. for Locked On A's. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Let's go A's, and please call me Sully. <laughs>